Some more major movie madness. Yes. We are going to close off with uh, Kabruski. Yeah, we're going to do the end of Kubrick Fest with Barry Lyndon. Obviously, Clockwork Orange, we haven't watched on this channel. We haven't watched Full Metal Jacket on this channel. No. We haven't watched Eyes Wide Shut. And we haven't watched Spartacus. If Kubrick were here, would say, isn't his film anyway. Okay. It was a studio film, so he doesn't really give a shit. Eyes Wide Shut, down the road, perhaps. Okay. You know, it's not really my favorite of the Kubrick movies. Clockwork Orange, you've seen in yeah. high school, of all, of all things. He saw it in some kind of health class. Uh, and then, of course, um, Full Metal Jacket, which you've seen as well. Uh, but you only see uh, Clockwork and Full Metal Jacket once right that's correct okay so we what we'll do is we'll just do a rewatch down the road I'm but in the it. meantime this one's kind of a cinematographer's treat more than anything it's i think cooper came off of clockwork orange this was a movie right after clockwork orange and like you know clockwork orange like kind of set in stone like his reputation and made him kind of a badass among uh younger people too so when you went to barry linden people were like oh it's a period piece but he's gonna do something crazy with it right what he did was he made this was the film that they shot with the 0 0.09 space lens um, oh yeah, and he did Is like this the, he the did candle like light candle light scenes. Okay, this I know that scene. A oh. lot of the interiors were shot with just candlelight. The housing, the lens housing, wouldn't fit any cameras except these old ass cameras from the fifties. Yeah, and they were getting rid of them at the time. And so Kubrick knew that he was going to need these cameras, and he called the studios and he was like, "Hey, do you have any of those old blah 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 cameras?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, we we're about to you know sell them. So we we're just like about her. to sell a bunch of them and get rid of them." Yeah, he's like, "Hey, would you mind giving them to me? You know, because I could probably I've been thinking about doing some tests with them, and, and they were only too happy to like say, well, yeah." sure send them to him yeah. and they didn't know what he's doing and he was getting cameras for this movie, movie for and then free. they found out and they're like oh you mother f <laughs> you ripped us off yeah, this film's probably more famous for its look okay. and its cinematography than anything there's some shots in this and when you see them you'll know they look like those old renaissance paintings you'll see in a museum just the way that they're laid out the kind of flatness of the shot Mm -hmm. And it just looks like it's a, a frame on a wall. So kind of like the definition of every frame is a painting. Um, so anyway, but... Is this going to be my wet dream? <laughs> well, cinema, cinematography-wise, might be. Okay. Um, you know, story-wise, it depends on how you feel about... Period pieces. Period pieces, because I love them. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. All right. All right, but before we go, I have a little treat. Will. I have a new purchase. You bought a Leica? I bought a Leica. 3000 So you just lost $3,000? I didn't lose $3,000. I, <laughs> I only spent $2,000 on this. Okay. Uh, but there's with the lens? This is like a Q, okay. and the Qs have a fixed lens. Okay. So for me, it was kind of a cheaper option. So I was looking at the Q2, which is $6,000. And okay. I was like, you know, before I make that kind of investment, let me try the Q1. We'll get a used one. We'll see how it goes. It's a 1.7 aperture. I just got it yesterday. It's really nice. So it's nice having like a faster camera. And I used to own a Leica M6 through college. And then uh, I sold it about 2010 because I wasn't using right. it. It was film yeah. only, uh, which I bought a Canon 7D. And that was uh, the camera I sold to, to get it. So I was like, you know, yeah. I wanted to be back to being a Leica fanboy. I mean, they're the built day. like tanks. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, they're heavy for what they are. But yeah. this is actually smaller than the M6. The M6 is a little longer, but the lens is smaller. I mean, you've seen those Leica lenses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like but really the M6 would be bigger because yeah. one, you got to have film. That's a little roll off. Barry's father, he would have made an eminent figure in his profession had he not been killed in a duel. Such a gentlemanly and also barbaric ass practice. <laughs> Raise your weapons! <laughs> Killarney, turn around and face the wall. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the object of Barry's attention and the cause of all his early troubles was his cousin, Nora Brady. Yeah, woman will do that to you. I have taken the ribbon from around my neck and hidden it somewhere on my purse. You are free to look for it any way you will. These interesting games that they played for sex back in the days. Yep. I like that soft glow they have. Yeah. Lens. It's really nice. But that fall off is probably just wide open. And a filter. I cannot find it. You're not even looking. I'll give you a hint. Yeah, look at the fall off. I'm mm -hmm. just right, right. It's just her face. Feel the ribbon. Why are you trembling? At the pleasure of finding the Oof, yeah, geez. Liar. Super milky. How fast would you have found that ribbon? Uh, pretty fast. Me too. The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. Beautiful shot. The symmetry. Of which John Quinn was the captain. Yay, war. But first we dance. Gotta have some 
some steps. Oh, there you go. Got some rhythm. I think about now. He's got like some, there's like certain steps to it. Oh yeah, no, for sure. This I is mean, like there's a lot a... of kicking. Kick. Yes. <laughs> kick, Nate, kick. He can get that leg pretty high for a guy. He looks like a strutting peacock, but you know he's tired. Poor guy. <sighs> Been marching all day. I can't dance all night. Are you jealous, Mister? Captain Quinn is a man, and you're only a boy. You haven't the world. If ever I should meet him again, you will find out who is the best man of the two. I'll fight him sword or pistol, Captain, as he is. Red. I mean, when you got a pretty setting like that, just show us all of it. It's so pretty. You mean you never felt Yeah, it? painting. Dude, dude, just like you said, painting. That's a damn painting. Beautifully backlit and dude, wow. Yeah, dude, wow. How nice to see you. Beautiful. Name of heavens, what's the matter? What are you talking about? That's a lot of fall off. Mm -hmm. This might be an opportune moment to return something to you. I must have forgotten them somewhere. <laughs> Awkward. It would appear you have something to discuss in private with this young man. Perhaps it would be best for me to withdraw. I mean, I have nothing to discuss with my cousin in private. It would appear you have a great deal to discuss in private. When he is but a boy and don't signify any more than my parrot or lapdog. Are you then in the habit of giving intimate articles of your clothing to your parrot or lapdog? Mayn't I give a bit of ribbon to my own cousin? Many yards as you like. <laughs> Ooh. When ladies make presents to gentlemen, it is time for other gentlemen to retire. I have the honor to wish you both a good day. What's the matter here? It is not the English way for ladies to have two lovers. And so, Mr. Brady, I'll thank you to pay me the sum you owe me, and I'll resign all claims to this young lady. Quinn, you're joking. I never was more in earnest. Wait! Hang you for a meddling brat. What business had you to come quarreling here with a gentleman who was 1500 a year? I love all oh, that was in complete sentences. <laughs> and like, that would all just be f**ks and f**k yous and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a respectful decorum to the yeah, way of and, speaking. Uh, and, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of why like, I love these because it's like you get a window into like what life would have been like 500 years ago. No, I agree. Ooh, he out here <laughs> throwing all kinds of eye shade. Here's to Captain and Mrs. John Quinn and Long Light. Oh, oh lovely. Mr. Jack, you're old for fate, you've got a treasure. <laughs> Here's to a long and happy life together. Here is my toast here, Captain John Quinn. Oh! Correct! Oh, Quinn, my dear fellow, are, are you all right? Oof, that, was a that rack. Hole. Yeah. yeah, that was nice. What does all the round mean? The fact is, sir, the young monkey's fallen in love with Nora. He the found young herself monkey. and the captain mighty sweet in the garden today, and now he's for murdering Jack Quinn. I've been insulted grossly in this house. I'm an Englishman, I am, and a man of property. And as for this impudent young swine, he should be horse -lipped. Mr. Quinn can have satisfaction any time he pleases. Oh, but... A pretty day's work of it you've made. Quinn has promised to pay off the four thousand pounds which is bothering your uncle so. And this is the return you make for his kindness. I will fight the man who pretends the hand of Nora Brady. I'll have his blood or he'll have mine. Oh wow, you are smitten to the next level. Faith and I believe you. <sighs> Y'all in these duels. Another beautiful pullback? Yeah. Poster. A painting, sorry. That's really pretty. You are this is a silly business. The girl will marry Quinn. You're but a boy, and Quinn is willing to consider you as such. Isn't that right, Quinn? Yeah, yeah. Dublin's a fine place. Here's ten guineas at your service. Will that satisfy you, Captain Quinn? Yes, if Mr. Barry will apologize, and I will consider the whole affair honorably settled. John Redmond. Say you're sorry, Redmond. Take the guineas. I'm not sorry. Oh, you are. And I soon go to Dublin as to hell. There's nothing else for it. God bless you, me boy. Good luck, Redmond. Cock your pistols. For a man so comfortable in war, he is very nervous. Aim your pistols. It's pooping his pants. Yeah, really? A shaky feather. One. Oh yeah, he's like... Two. Three. <laughs> is he dead? Quite dead. So much for the dead. You've robbed hey. us of 1,500 a year. Hey, Bob, no, money. you better ride off before the police are up. They'll find I mean, you, that's huh? the funny thing about it is like he's trying to prevent a marriage between this guy and her, and if he kills him and wins, he has to leave because he's in trouble. Right, because so it's, 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 it's an illegal way, thing. Either yeah. way, you're going to lose because she'll meet somebody else. And the battle with Quinn set him on his travels at a very early age. I love that look. That's yeah. Dope. You do know what can happen to him if he's taken. I'll be all right. 
leaving your mother to her own devices. No lad who has liberty for the first time Another painting. and 20 guineas in his pocket is very sad. Wait, was he only offered 10 before, so now he's got 20? Classic. You're about to get robbed, son. Good morning again, young sir. How do you do? I'm Captain Feeney. The Captain Feeney? None other. May I introduce you to my son, Seamus? How do you do? <laughs> to whom have I the honor of speaking? The politest robbery ever. My name's Redmond Barry. And now I'm afraid we must get on to the more regrettable stage of our brief acquaintance. <laughs> and keep your hands high above your head, please. There must be 20 guineas in gold here, Father. You seem to be a very well set up young gentleman, sir. That's all the money my mother had in the world. Mightn't I be allowed to keep it? I'm just one step ahead of the law myself. Killed an English officer in a duel, and I'm on my way to Dublin till things cool down. In my profession, we hear many such stories. Yours is one of the most intriguing and touching I've heard in many weeks. I'm afraid I cannot grant your request, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll allow you to keep those fine pair of boots, which in normal circumstances I would have for myself, and I suggest you now start walking. Mightn't I be allowed to keep my horse? I should like to oblige you, but with people like us, we must be able to travel faster than our clients. Good day, young sir. <laughs> than our clients. They're damn fool for having all that money in one place. Yeah, well, the, the son did check thoroughly. If he'd kept the money in his boots, he'd be walking away with some. You know, That's like, true. Maybe keep five in his pocket, That's keep true. 15 in his shoes. Or on the horse. But they stole the horse. The opportunity to earn distinction in the European wars seemed a great stroke of good fortune, and King George was too much in want of men to heed from whence they came. <laughs> right. I love the kind of ironic way he puts things. Uh-huh. Can I have a new beaker? This one is full of grease. <laughs> Give the gentleman a towel and a basin of turtle soup. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him about his wife, the washerwoman who baits him. Mr. Tool, is it a towel of your wife's washing? They say she wipes your face often with one. Oh. Why did you hide so yesterday when Mrs. Tool came to visit you? You afraid of getting your ears boxed? Gentlemen, gentlemen, you may fight it out with fists the whole stool. <laughs> Redmond didn't come with nothing. Homeboy was like, let's go. <laughs> well, Redmond's a lot of things, but he's got guts. He's got guts. Oh, that is a nasty scar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Biting, yeah. kicking, or scratching. The last man to remain standing is the winner. Hey, gentlemen, <laughs> commence fighting. Oh, hey, no, oh. hey. He's a scrappy young fella. He floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. <laughs> oh, nice shot. Really well done, especially for how big this camera probably was. It was a little one, like an airy. Oh, a small, yeah, smaller. I've seen like yeah. pictures of it. Mr. Tool is a mess. <laughs> this guy's done. Oh, oh, nice. Stay down. Go to sleep, dude. Go to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. It's all done. Fatality. <laughs> one of these occasions brought the welcome appearance of no other than his second in the fatal duel. What up, Cap? It would have been better for all of us it. if we'd known what had become of you. Didn't you think of writing to your mother? My father's sword. I couldn't tell her. Your mother wouldn't care a pin about those things. And write her a proper letter and tell her that you're safe and well and married to Brown Bess. Married to Brown Bess? His rifle. He's in the army. Oh. Has something happened to Nora? Yeah, she got married. She took on so about your going away. She is now Mrs. John Quinn. Was there another oh, John Quinn? The very same one, my boy. He recovered from his wound. The shot you hit him with was not likely to hurt him. Do you think the Bradys would let you kill 1,500 a year out of the family? They about that coin. <laughs> the plan of the duel was all arranged in order to get you out of the way. That's clever. Hit him, you certainly did, my lad. The fellow was so frightened that he was an hour in coming to. <laughs> Are you in want of cash? You may draw on me, but I got a couple of hundred out of your uncle for my share. Mm -hmm. And while they last, you shall never want. That was a nice little switcheroo. No, no, use my pistol. Oh, nice, fantastic. Establishing moments. Yep, another brilliant pullout. This is gonna be while well, moving. Yeah. Barry's first taste of battle was only a skirmish. Nice. This way of fighting. Cowboy shot. Oh. It was memorable enough for those who took part. Yeah, this is this is so weird to me. It's because those guns only fire one round a minute. It's a way for the people shooting to concentrate fire. The gentlemanly part of it is like they're waiting for them to get in land where they go. Well, they have to get into range. They don't stop, they keep marching. It's crazy just to walk into that. Ah! 
if I had to fight a war, I don't think I'd want to fight it that way. The back of the bus. Oh shit. They just keep marching forward. So again, so this is the part I don't understand. Why are they not returning fire? <laughs> I don't, you know. This is the part of like old school war I do not get. Whoa, your uncle is not a small man. Yeah. <laughs> I have only a hundred guineas left to give you, for I lost the rest of cards last night. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me, my boy, for we'll never meet again. <laughs> God, with the war still going on in the background, that's ugh. It is well to dream of glorious war in a snug armchair at home, but it is a very different thing to see it firsthand. Barry's thoughts turn from those of military glory to those of finding a way to escape the service. It is with these sad instruments that fate did not intend he should remain long an English soldier. And an accident occurred which took him out of the service. I've got something to tell you which I don't think you're going to be very happy about. Don't be cross up there. Jonathan, don't be such a silly ass. You're making a great big mystery about it. And where are you going to this time? I'm going to Bremen, carrying important messages and dispatches to Prince Henry. Here was the opportunity to escape from the army. It was only a few miles through the forest, where this officer's uniform and papers should allow him to travel without suspicion. Look at that fall off, dude. Barry was very glad to see the blue and white uniforms of a company of Prussian infantry. I have not eaten uh, anything all day. Would you uh, feed me? I'd be happy to pay you. I think so. Yeah, it looks like candlelit only as well. The placement of the other practicals is nice too. Mm -hmm. The one in the background and the foreground here. Yeah. Pops of light. And where might Peter's father be? He's in the war. And how long has he been gone? Since springtime. Must be hard for you to be alone. It is. It must be very dangerous for you to be in the war. <laughs> the baby looks like a doll. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly rosy cheeks. You are sometimes lonely. Few days or sometimes. Well, if you, uh, you know, you insist. Yeah, exactly. That would be very nice. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> it's Mr. Steal Your Girl. Stole a man's horse, his clothes, his name, and another, another man's wife. wife. Well, he didn't steal her, he just kind of borrowed her for a while. A lady who sets her heart upon a lad in uniform is prepared to change lovers pretty quickly or her life will be but a sad one. This heart of Lesions is like many a neighboring town and had been stormed and occupied several times before Barry came to invest in <laughs> Several times after. During when? the five years which the war had now lasted, so exhausted the males of his kingdom that he had to employ scores of recruiters who would hesitate at no crime, including kidnapping, to keep supplied those brilliant regiments of his with food for powder. Food for powder. Mm -hmm. Nice. Painting! I'm Captain Podstoff. Can we be of some assistance to you, Lieutenant? Thank you, Captain, but I must continue on my way. I'm carrying urgent dispatches. May I ask your destination? I'm traveling to Bremen. Because Bremen is in the opposite direction. Now that we are riding in the same direction, I'd be very honored if you'd allow me to offer you a meal, a bed for the night. So much for Holland. Yep. Barry was treated with great civility and was asked a thousand questions about England. He described the king and the ministers, boasted that the British ambassador in Berlin was his uncle. <laughs> his host seemed quite satisfied with these stories, but at the same time, he led Barry on with a skillful combination of questions and flattery. Let us drink to the friendship yeah, he fully leaned of into our this. Anytime he could, candlelit scenes. To whom are you carrying your dispatches? It's, uh, General Williams. Confidential? Oh, no, no, I'll just play it. These are manist under arrest. You know that word. I'm a British officer. You are a deserter. I suspected you this morning, and your lies and folly have confirmed this to me. You pretend to carry dispatches to a general who has been dead these ten months. Now, will you join and take the bounty, sir, or will you be given up? I volunteer. The Prussian service was considerably worse than the English. The punishment was incessant. A lash for every lie! Barry fell into the very worst of courses. And company, and was soon very far advanced in the science of every kind of misconduct. <sighs> Back among the ranks. You're now part of target practice again. Nice shot. That was cool. Nice little, yeah, track following with the. That's great. Well, at least he gets to be a sniper. <laughs> you know, not, not front behind, lines. Uh, behind some cover, yeah. Yeah. I love how his options were to either go back and be punished or to join their army. Yeah, right. Oh, nice. Uh, 
Got a little honor in him. Should have seen the first guy I did this to. Yeah, this is nothing. This is a cakewalk. The colonel's speech declared the king had expressed his satisfaction and that the bravery of Corporal Redmond Barry in rescuing Captain Potsdorf was to be specially rewarded with the sum of two Frederick Dorr. Uh, he's still out here respectfully making a name for himself. You're a gallant soldier. For all your talent, bravery, I'm sure you will come to no good. I have fallen into bad company, it is true. I never had a kind friend or protector before to show that I was worthy of better things. Nice. I would go to the devil to serve the regiment. He had, for some time now, ingratiated himself considerably with Captain Potsdorf, whose confidence in him was about to bring its reward. Yeah, you saved his damn life. I should like you to meet my uncle, the Minister of Police. I've spoken to the Minister regarding your services and your fortune is made. So you think that's the actual background or a poster? Or like I a think, painted? I think this is a real place. Okay. Redmond, your loyalty to me and your service to the regiment has pleased me very well. There's lately come to Berlin a gentleman in the service of the Empress Queen of Austria. But we have some reason to fancy that this Monsieur de Balibari is a native of your country of Ireland and that he has come here as a spy. It makes an ideal choice to go into his service and to find out for us whether or not he is a spy. That is a character look right there. Jawohl, euer Gnaden. It was very imprudent of him, but when Barry saw the splendor of the Chevalier's appearance, the nobleness of his manner, he felt it impossible to keep disguise with him. Those who have never been out of their country know little what it is to hear a friendly voice in captivity. Mm -hmm. I have a confession to make to you. I'm an Irishman. I was abducted into the Prussian army two years ago, and now I've been put into your service to serve as a watch upon your actions. Yeah, I know he's a country member. You flip sides quick, son. <laughs> The Chevalier was as much affected as Barry at thus finding one of his countrymen. He then takes a airing in his carriage. Lovely Barry presented his reports regularly at the minister's That's office. That's great. He was instructed, and it is always far the best way Going back, yep. nice. to tell as much truth as his story would possibly bear. Fine order punch, Oyaganar. Fine. It was agreed that Barry should keep his character of valet and that he should keep a good lookout on the trumps when serving the champagne and punch about. He was speedily able to give his dear patron much assistance against his opponents at the green table. If, for instance, he wiped the table with a napkin, it was to show the enemy was strong in diamonds. If he adjusted a chair, it meant ace king. The Prince of Turbingen was a nobleman who had intimate connections with the great Frederick. Ooh. Chevalier. What a shot. Though I cannot say how, I believe you have cheated me. I deny your grace's accusation and beg you to say how you have been cheated. I don't know. God, yeah, let that fall off. But I believe I have been. Also, that man's jawline is crazy. Like, his look is so unique. Which I have honorably won. If you will have your money now, you must fight for it. If you will be patient, you maybe might I recognize will pay him. you something he was the, at the time. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, he was the German commander. Really? Mm -hmm. If I am to be so tame as to take this, then I must give up an honorable and lucrative occupation. I am at your disposal for whatever purposes you wish. Was the prince cheated? I believe the Chevalier won the money fairly. What are these Chevalier's intentions? A meeting with the Prince of Turbingen is impossible. The prince has left him only that choice. The prince bit off more than he could chew. Yeah, but he's a prince and you can't fight around princes. That's true. You must tell them I intend to demand satisfaction. The worst they can do is send me out of this dreary country of theirs. You shall not be left behind. The king has determined to send the Chevalier out of the country. When the Chevalier comes out to his carriage tomorrow morning, two officers will meet him and arrest him. escort him to the frontier. Where is my servant, Laszlo? I will let down the steps for your honor. What is the meaning of this? Please get inside, your honor. My orders are to take your honor to the frontier by any means which may be necessary. But if you come along willingly, I am to give you this purse on behalf of the Prince of Turbingen, containing 2,000 Friedrich Dor. That's not how much he owes me, though. All Europe shall hear of this. Barry was escorted across the frontier into Saxony and freedom. Hey, how many and candles do you want? All of the candles. And began his professional work as a gamester. Candles on candles on candles. Resolving thenceforward and forever to live the life of a gentleman. Soon there was no court in Europe where he and the Chevalier were not received. Well, the painted faces are a look. The fake moles. Mm hmm. <laughs> in ridiculous places. <laughs> Will you give me credit for 5,000 Louis d'Or, please? Of course, Lord Lad. It's fine, it's fine, no, it's fine. 
It's the same damn money <laughs> over again. Maintenant, tout sur la carte. Yes, yes. Then it all, all 5,000 in one go. Finally a language I just kind of understand. I understand gambling. That's the, uh, I lost everything, so now let me and try to double it so I can be breaking even. Yep, and he's also going to cheat. And right back into our pockets. <laughs> Je suis fatigué. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of sleep. <laughs> but before you go, please. They always played on credit. They never pressed for their winnings. But woe to the man who did not pay when the note became due. Redmond oh, Barry slavis. was sure to wait upon him with his bill. It was his great skill with the sword and readiness to use it maintained the reputation of the firm, so to speak. of wealth and nobility consistently learned how to do this but for him to know how to sword fight so well is pretty amazing i will pay you today sir that their life for all its splendor was not without some danger and difficulty and one which required them to live a wandering and disconnected life five years in the army had by now dispelled any of those romantic notions regarding love. Are we gonna center up? Land. Beautiful. Ooh, and we push in. Beautiful. That's a long ass lens. The Countess of Linden, a woman of vast wealth. She was the wife of the Right Honorable Sir Charles Reginald Linden, a cripple wheeled about in a chair. He's powdered up too. Yep. What's really nice about the candlelit shots is they kind of add an amount of like historical accuracy to it. I'll tell you what, whoever's the focus puller on this really had his hands full. I mean, what's nice though is many of these shots are just are static. Just static. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your focal plane is like from the tip of the nose to the eyes. Ear to, yeah, yeah. He's got that same look he had for Nora. I feel you coming. Darken in the shadows. So simple, but so beautiful. <laughs> Not even words, just... I know. I mean, it's just that easy. I guess. Painting! To make a long story short, six hours after they met, her ladyship was in love. That is definitely a painting. That is And was scarcely gorgeous. out of her ladyship's sight. I wonder where this is. My old boss had a house in England, and they, they did do improvements on it, but they had to use, like, original materials. It cost them fortune. Good evening, Mr. Barry. Have you done with my lady? I beg your pardon. Come, come, sir. I'm a man who would rather be known as a cuckold than a fool. <laughs> your chaplain, Mr. Runt, introduced me into the company of your lady to advise me on a religious matter. <laughs> he, he wants to step into my shoes! Is it not a pleasure, gentlemen, for me, as I am drawing near the goal, to find my home such a happy one? My wife's so fond of me that she is even now thinking of appointing a successor, getting everything ready for her husband's departure! I hope you're not thinking of leaving us soon, Sir Charles. But if you do... Not so soon, my dear, as you may fancy, perhaps. Why, ma'am, I've been given over many times these four years, and there was always a candidate or two waiting to apply for the situation. It grieves me to keep you or any gentleman waiting. Had you not better arrange with my doctor or have the cook flavor my omelette with arsenic, eh? What are the odds, gentlemen, that I live to see Mr. Barry hang yet? <laughs> I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. Sir, let those laugh that win. Oh, no, he called him Mr. Barry. Oh, gave your own self a heart attack. Oh. I'll get a search. Yeah, gotta get two. Died at Spa in the Kingdom of Belgium, the Right Honorable Sir Charles Reginald Lyndon. We are gathered together here in the sight of God to join together. This man is not in any way to be enterprised, <laughs> nor taken in hand, <laughs> unadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly, to satisfy men's carnal lusts and appetites like brute beasts <laughs> that have no understanding. He's only looking at you, Barry. Yep. My watch. <laughs> <laughs> have you the wing? <laughs> Barry had now arrived at the pitch of prosperity, had raised himself to a higher sphere beautiful, beautiful, of society. Beautiful. The highest one would... Would you mind not smoking for a while, Redmond? 
Oh, you son of... That's a dick move. That's such a dick move. This is why people should be a little bit more appreciative of the things they have. Seriously. You became a dick so quick. You should be happy that your mother has remarried. Not in this way, and certainly not to this man. He seems to me little more than a common opportunist. Smart kid. Brian Patrick Linden. Her ladyship and Barry lived, after a while, pretty separate. That she should give up the pleasures and frivolities yep, of the world. Another painting right there. Both leaving shots. that part of the duty to be performed by him. Ugh, this little creamy roll off is never gonna get old. It just looks so pretty. Mm -hmm. <gasps> the nanny. If I was old enough, I'd challenge him to a duel. But I'm not. Now she must add jealousy to her other complaints. Ooh. Hey, what a shot. Would you mind excusing us? I'd like a word alone with Lady Lind. I'm sorry. No, you're not. But okay. Yeah, it's kind of sad because up until this point, Barry's been kind of a good guy. He really has, actually. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's done his share of lying and stuff, but he's never been, like, just outright mean, rude, and disrespectful. Yeah. Goodbye, little Brian. Yes. Mm. Take good care of your mother. Better than you have, foe. Give your father a proper kiss. You're not my father. Lord Bullingdon, have you lost your tongue? My father was Sir Charles Linden. I have not forgotten him if others have. Lord Bullingdon, you have insulted your father. <laughs> you have insulted my father. Boy, go out there and give me a switch off a tree. I mean, he's not right. He's not wrong. But still. One. Yep, there we go. Two. Ten lashes to you. Five. I'm getting into that ass. <laughs> Six. I'd give my full ten. Ah, for real. I've never laid a cane on the back of a lord before, but if you force me to, I shall speedily become used to the practice. What? As Bullingdon grew up to be a man, his hatred for Barry assumed an intensity equaled only by his increased devotion to his mother. Let's see if you have something behind your... Yeah, yes, you have. <laughs> Witchcraft! <laughs> Burn him! <laughs> it feels as if he's bettered himself as a husband and father. Oh, you should have seen the look on the Frenchman's faces when 23 rampage and he devils, sword and pistol, cut and thrust, pell-mell came tumbling into their fort. Oof, again, painting. Beautiful. And for which I pinched myself to educate. Little Brian is a darling boy. Your lady wife knows she has a treasure she couldn't have had, and she'd taken a duke to marry him. But if one day she should tire of my wild Redmond, or if she should die, what future would that be for my son? You have not a penny of your own and cannot transact any business without the Countess's signature. Upon her death, the entire estate would go to young Bullingdon, who bears you little affection. And darling Brian, at the mercy of his stepbrother. You Half must brother. obtain a title. You have important friends. They can tell you how these things are done. For money, well-timed and properly applied, can accomplish anything. It was the 13th Earl of Wendover. This nobleman is one of the gentlemen of His Majesty's closet. You would be wise to fix upon him your chief reliance for the advancement of your claim to the peerage. When I take up a person, Mr. Linden, <laughs> he or she is safe. There is no question about them anymore. Oh, I don't mean that they're the most virtuous or the cleverest, or the stupidest or the richest or the best born. People about whom there is no question. But any gentleman with an estate and 30,000 a year should have a peerage. 30,000 a year when his, his uncle's family was all about 1,500. 1500. The striving after this peerage was one of Barry's most unlucky dealings of this time. He lavished money here and diamonds there and purchased pictures at ruinous prices. He gave repeated entertainments to those friends to his claim were likely to advance it. Bribes were administered that you would be astonished to know what great nobleman condescended to receive his loans. I'm glad to see you here today, Lord Wendover. So this is George III. Yes. Because it's right at the revolutionary time. Your Majesty, may I present Mr. Barry Lyndon? Mr. Lyndon has raised a company of troops and sent them to America to fight the rebels against Your Majesty's crown. Good, that's right, Mr. Lyndon. Raise another company and go with them, too. Sir Christopher Neville, Your Majesty. Hmm. All that for just uh, two seconds. Yeah. That's all you need, though, right? Apparently. Barry was one of those born clever enough at gaining a fortune, but incapable of keeping one. For the qualities and energies which lead a man to achieve the first are often the very cause of his ruin in the latter case. Yeah. Gentlemen, I'm going to leave you on your own for a few minutes. That's my 
my pencil. Give it to me. No, it isn't. Yes, it, is. it is not your it's pencil. My pencil. Listen, I've had this all month. Brian, don't sit down. Listen, will you be quiet? My oh. What the devil is going on in here? I told you never to lay a hand on this child. One, two. Will that be all, Mr. Redmond Barry? Ooh. Yes, that'll be all. From this moment, I will submit to no further chastisement from you. I will kill you if you lay hands on me ever again. Is that entirely clear to you, sir? Damn. Get out of here. Being rich looks so boring. <laughs> there was no f TV back then, man. You had to read books and listen to music and play charades and <clears throat> parlor games and so on and so forth. Oh my god. Don't you think he fits my shoes very well, your ladyship? What a pity it is I am not dead for your sake. The Lindens would then have a worthy representative and enjoy all the benefits of the illustrious blood of the Barrys of Barryville. Would they not, Mr. Redmond Barry? From the way I love this child, my lord, you ought to know I would have loved his elder brother had he proved worthy of any mother's affection. I have borne as long as mortal could endure the ill treatment of the insolent Irish upstart whom you have taken into your bed. It is not only the lowness of his birth, his open infidelity, his shameless robberies and swindling of my property and yours. And as I cannot personally chastise this low-bred ruffian, I have decided to leave my home and never return, at least during his detested life or during my own. <laughs> oh. And you said it wasn't entertaining. I mean, the disrespect on both Jesus. <laughs> These noblemen don't even know what to do. <laughs> All right. It's like 10 of them on him. I know. Redmond still got it. He's <laughs> a fighter, man. I mean, that turned really entertaining quickly. Really quick. Yeah, but you know what? That Bullingdon kid is like smart. Like you made him look like an ass. Oh, no, for sure. He's like, you are, you are not a nobleman. You shall never be. Will anyone be joining your lordship? No, I shall be alone. And thus was the beginning of the WWE. <laughs> How are you? Ah, oh, Barry, hello. I see you're alone. Why don't you come over and join me? I'm expecting someone to join me soon. By the way, on the 8th of next month, we're having some guests over for cards. We'd love to have you and Lady Wendover join us. But I think I'm engaged on that evening. If he had murdered Lord Bullingdon, Barry could scarcely have been received with more coldness and resentment. His friends fell away from him, and a legend arose of his cruelty to his stepson. Now, all the bills came down on him together. Their amount was frightful. It's the waiter from The Shining in the really? bathroom. Yeah, he's in a lot of Kubrick's movies, actually. Oof, another painting shot. Mm -hmm. The dog perfectly still, yeah. a swan in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Who's the guy from uh, PB PBS? Bob Ross. Bob Ross. <laughs> We're just going to put a little swan right here. Right Happy there. little swan. Happy little swan. Barry had his faults, but no man could say of him that he was not a good and tender father. He loved his son with a blind partiality. Mm. It is impossible to convey what high hopes he had for the boy, but fate had determined that he should leave none of his race behind him, and that he should finish his life poor, lonely, and childless. Will you buy me a horse? But you already have little Julia. Julie is only a pony. I want a real horse. Oh, you think you're big enough for the hunt, do you? Oh, yes, Papa. Well, I'll have to think about it. How much are you asking for him? 100 guineas. 75 seems more like the right price. I'll accept 80 guineas and not a shilling less. 80 it'll be. Done, sir. Take the horse over to Doolan's farm and tell him he needs a bit of breaking in. And say it's for Master Brian's birthday next week and I want it to be a surprise. Did you buy the horse? The horse you were going to buy me for my birthday? I know nothing about any horse. And it was at Doolan's farm when Mick the groom was breaking it in. Brian, when is your birthday? Next Tuesday. Well, you'll just have to wait till then to find out. Sure, thank you, Papa. Promise me you will not ride that horse except in the company of your father. Yes, Mama. And I promise your lordship a good flogging if you even so much as go to Doolan's farm to see him before your birthday. I'm sorry to trouble you with this, Mr. Linden, but I believe Master Brian may have dissipated your orders and stolen away to Doolan's farm. Mm. Now remember, you promised a flogging. Yep. No need. What has happened here? I noticed the lad riding across the field, sir, and having trouble with the horse, which was flying up a bit. Animal punched and reared, and the poor lad was thrown. Oh, what a shot. Why did you disobey? You won't hit me, will you? Then whooped yourself. No, my darling. He remained yet with his parents for two days. Am I going to die? No, my darling, you're not going to die. You're going to get better. So I can't feel anything. 
Does that mean I'm already dead in part of my body? Oh, my darling, it's where you were hurt by the horse. If I die, will I go to heaven? Of course you will, my darling. Will you both promise me something? Never to quarrel so as to love each other so that we may meet again in heaven. But pulling to the sick quarrels and people would never go. Damn! Mm. I am the resurrection. Oh man, it's the same cart he was in when his birthday. Damn. The days before his birthday. The music's perfect. It really is. God, using the same carriage. What a choice. God, uh, he's a broken man at this point. I mean, for good reason. Barry's grief was inconsolable. Yep, does nothing but drink. His mother was the only person in his misfortune who would remain faithful to him. Her ladyship plunged into devotion. Damn. The entire management of the house and of the Linden estate fell to Mrs. Barry. I'm afraid I must ask you with the greatest reluctance to resign your post. Politely saying, piss off. But it is out of the question for me to consider leaving her ladyship in her present state. I believe state. you are largely responsible for the state of mind she is in. I take my instructions only from her ladyship. My only concern is for Lady Linden. Your only concern is for her ladyship's signature. You will pack your bags and leave by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Jeez. Her ladyship made an attempt to kill herself by taking poison. This, nevertheless, caused an intervention from a certain quarter. Oof. I love the shift to handheld for that. I think Kubrick did all his handhelds on top. Hey, her son's back. Allowed the Barrys to establish a brutal and ignorant tyranny over our lives, which has left my mother a broken woman, and to squander and ruin a fine family fortune. I know now what I must do and what I shall do. return for another whooping mr redmond barry the last occasion on which we met you wantonly caused me injury and dishonor in such a manner and to such an extent as to which no gentleman can willingly suffer without demanding satisfaction you are so late though for real though i have now come to claim that satisfaction mr linda these are matched pair of pistols and as you have seen your second has loaded one and i have loaded the other but as they belong to lord bullingdon you may have whichever one you wish to determine who will have first fire, I will toss a coin in the air. Wait, what? First fire? The offended party, it is Lord Bullingdon's choice to call the toss. What is with this first fire shit? This is to like, they, they changed it up through dual rules? It's kind of stupid to me, too. Is this just... It is heads. And Lord Bullingdon will have the first fire. Will you take your ground? I'm so confused. I guess it's just a different format of dueling. Oh, dueling. It's just should ask for swords. Like I said, I don't like these duels at all, but I'm damn sure not doing this style of dueling. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Ten paces. Also, I always thought there were you would walk the ten paces and then yeah, that's turn another way to go. Yeah, he's supposed to uh, like back to back and yeah. walk away. This is just like target practice, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Although I do notice that they turn themselves to their sides to make themselves less of a target. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you ready to receive Lord Bullingdon's fire? Yeah. Look how weak he is. Yep. Yes. Sucking it. Cock your pistol and prepare to fire. <laughs> Fall back up. <laughs> I don't trust this man's aim at it. This young man's aim at all. Yeah, you a damn fool. I must have another one. But That's you must first stand your ground and yep. allow Mr. Linden his turn to fire. That is correct, Lord Bullingdon. That counts as your shot. <laughs> he didn't even prepare with Are the rules of firing and shooting you? Yep. I've been, I've, I've done been about this before. life. I've been about this life, son. Are you ready to receive Mr. Linden's fire? He's ready to shit his pants. Mm -hmm. yes. Cock your pistol and prepare to fire. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that was so satisfying. <laughs> Stand your ground, bully me, you jerk. Oh, man. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Is your pistol cocked, Mr. Linden? Yes. The pacing and build-up is so nice. One, two. Yep. God, what a gentleman. In view of Mr. Linden having fired into the ground, do you now consider that you have received satisfaction? No. Gonna try again? I have not received satisfaction. Okay. Shut that up. 
Yeah, this is the stupid way to do a duel. It's not really fair. Does he get to fire oh, again yeah. first? Yeah. Mr. Linden, Some are you ready? Yes. Mm. He's got crazy guts, that guy. How about you not f*** it up this time? Actually, you probably can. There you go. One. Uh, two. Two. You didn't wait till three. Really, but that's right. Semantics. Right, right. Terrible shot. Right, I nearly finished. I mean, it's not a deadly wound. I'm afraid you'll have to lose the leg. Lose the leg? What for? To save your life. Yep. All right. You about to become Lieutenant Dan. Let's go. Oh, Should have shot him. Should have shot him. you. No mercy. I want you to inform Mrs. Barry of what has happened. You will naturally want to go to him. Yes, my lord. See, if they'd have kept that on, that none of this shit would have happened either. That was a bad move. Well, I mean, he wants to get back to the house. No, for so sure. So he, like, facilitated all that shit. And she wouldn't have, like, gone in to, like, you know, try to kill herself and run with there to, like, help her. With oh, that's true. Emotions. That's true. That, that's, yeah, that's a big one for sure. Interesting POV no, shot. No, 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 thank you, Mrs. Barry. Not just now. The bear of bad news. Lord Bullington has instructed me to offer you an annuity, 500 guineas a year for life, specifically on the condition of your leaving England. But should you decide to remain here, your stay would infallibly plunge you into jail. 500 shillings. What was the lonely and broken-hearted man it's to a do? a year a month. A year. Annuity. Yeah, a year. Annuity. And returned to Ireland with his mother. But he appears to have resumed his former profession of a gambler without his former success. He never saw Lady Linden again. And painting. <laughs> More signing. Oh, is this the payment to him? 500 guineas. This in the reign of George the Third, that aforesaid personage lived and cried, good or bad, handsome or ugly, rich or poor, they are all equal now. Very good point. So what do you think? Me likey. Good movie, uh, right? It is a good movie. It's I, a, obviously, it's a little slower paced, but it's, it's slower paced. But I don't. There's a lot of stuff that happens. There's a lot of stuff that happens. It's very interesting. It's 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 intriguing. It's heartbreaking. It's times. heartbreaking. The, does. the the characters have Redmond. He has a lot of layers to how like he kind of falls into these positions of of power of, of, of power of wealth of all these things, right? Yeah. Totally. And the guy had kind of an adventurous. Life. life you know he was like a soldier he was a spy he was like a double agent gambler and then he was a you know a sub lord he didn't have the title but he was living like like a like a, a king yes yeah, basically for sure uh, and like romancing this beautiful woman and it all falls apart because it's kind of an a-hole to that kid to that uh, stepson of his which i don't have to ask i mean obviously you like the cinematography but what'd you think of like the look like what was your what was what sort of your analysis of like because now you know that this this one i think it won the oscar for best cinematography of that year this like. is so spoken of in cinematography circles often referred to by many of the best cinematographers is like the master of yeah and I, I, would, I would agree there's a masterpiece masterpiece lets light it in the way they would have lit time how, period how it would have been lit, lit. In general, yeah. um and I, th I think it it plays well to the piece and it's it is beautiful yeah I, again the the, the, the time glow, honored that glowy the glow, yeah exactly yeah. Like kind of like that first scene with Nora, where it's just like very glowy, like that hazy look that they yeah, have. It's almost yeah, because, it's like an yeah, dreamy, dreamy look. look, and it's it's definitely like, if you open it up that much, it's gonna have this creamy, milky kind of misty look to it. They they leaned into it. They let it, you know, they let it happen. And I love that. I really do. Slow pullbacks that kind of you know enter the world focused on something and then you slowly pull back and get this picturesque painting like we spoke on 50 millimeter 0.7 lens okay so did you go yep. to the Cooper plan did, did, did you go to the Kubrick museum i did not like the fastest lens i know about right now is the noctilux which is a leica lens so this okay. one's a full stop faster than that. than that it doesn't sound like much yeah but it is it's quite a lot. a lot it's a lot uh, there's a few shots that i really remember and the one where the the stepson comes in and like puts his hand on this under his chin to wake him up 
where he's just sitting there like passed out. Yeah, that, to yeah. Me, looks and the like, men behind. That's yeah. like that painting look. It looks. Yeah. It looks like the painting. The way they kind of flattened it out a bit. Yep. It, like the lights coming in from the window. It's very much like even the, the other people aren't even moving. They're yeah. all just kind of they're, they're all just, just standing, standing still. Sitting there. Yeah. And even like Quinn is uh, courting uh, Nora, and then like there's that other little couple in the background. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Like, that's like a straight up, you yeah. know, like the composition is like let's put a happy little couple over here, just the Bob Ross version of it. Mm-hmm. But you know, it looks. <laughs> exactly sure. like the renaissance paintings that he's later buying when he's become barry linden mm-hmm. and i'm sure he went to the cinematographer and said i want this to look like renaissance paintings. i want every one of my frames to match yeah. the, the 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 period and also the yeah, the paintings it's stunning and it's simple feels like they just use natural light or they pushed in with light but then those candle shots it's just that the candles just candles yeah. it's just the candles i mean those are, that's, those are the shots that are like constantly talked about it's one, very hard to do it's, one of it one a lot of time one of the downsides of uh of this film was it was a commercial failure it was really one of kubrick's I, first I, I can see why it's really one of kubrick's first like commercial this is such a big shift i mean well just I because you know imagine I mean, you're, coming, trailer you're coming off 2001 you're coming off clockwork orange mm-hmm. you're kind of setting a tone of these groundbreaking sort of like iconoclastic films and then you mm-hmm. come back to this that's a very sort of like we've seen this type of story these types of uh period pieces before about you know it's high culture lordships and all this stuff and not that it's a bad story but it just wasn't resonating with 1977 sort of yeah. punked out uh you know counterculture culture yeah so it was a little bit of maybe it was he was kind of toned up but maybe he wanted to do something totally different and i seem to remember in reading his biography that he had like this napoleon project that he wanted to do for like 20 years it took for kubrick only to 12 films it took him forever to get a film done Mm -hmm. Uh, and he also wanted to do a film about the holocaust but then schindler's list was done and he was like well now there's no point so it would take him so long to get stuff done that by the time that he like rolled around to something it kind of was like maybe a little out of date or something i think that this film kind of ends up being a victim of that all right so uh uh, grades what let's do lord bullying lord linden when he's laughing at barry that whole little thing uh how many how many of those do you give this out of five okay twelve five you get a 12. I get a 12. Hey, that's a pretty high score. That's, yeah, that's the best one we've had for uh, any Kubrick film. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm right there. 12. 12 is a good number. 12 Lord Lindens. 12 Lord Lindens. This concludes our Kubrick Fest for oh. now. There might be some Kubricks that pop up from Bye, time Kubrick. to time. But I think it's a good one to end on, to be honest. It's a, no, I think it was. this is a fantastic one to end on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we're on to our Kurosawa. So we're still in the Ks. Probably my second favorite director. Uh, also yeah. a director who... Uh, inspired so inspired many, so many, so yes, many. <laughs> a yojimbo and the seven samurai and it so well, i'm um, i'm yeah because yeah. i want to see where some of my later future films got their foundation yeah, yeah. lucas and those guys mm-hmm. they loved him star wars was like part lawrence of arabia part 2001 part hidden fortress and uh, the other kurosawa films but hidden fortress is like kind of the format kind of like wise general obi-wan obi-wan you had a princess who was wild and like leia you know, she, yeah there yeah. was leia then you had the two, uh, these two characters that were like morons. They were kind of roaming around, and you'll see they're like R2D2 R2 and, no, oh, no. R2 and C3PO for okay. sure. You'll see why when you see the movie. All right, so we'll be back on the couch next week. Yes, we will. Go ahead. We'll hit, see you in the comments. Like, subscribe, hit up our in, our uh, socials, yeah, Instagram, and our Patreon, and we will see you as we continue on with more major movie madness. Look this way. Yes, it's the same pose. Like, that's the same exact picture. (laughs) I got like three poses. Madness. (laughs)